On November 1st, Israelis hold national elections to choose a new prime minister. One week later, Americans vote in midterm elections that could dramatically alter the future of U.S.-Israeli relations. Iranian leaders continue marching towards the bomb, even while beating and murdering their own citizens. Yet President Biden, well, he continues begging Tehran to accept an insane nuclear deal that wouldn't stop Iran from getting the bomb, but would inject a trillion dollars into the Iranian coffers by 2030. The Rosenberg Report will cover it all, but we begin by looking at the most dangerous man on the planet. Tomorrow, Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin turns 70. Few outside Moscow will be celebrating. Since coming to power in 2000, Putin has sent forces into Georgia, Crimea, Syria, and now Ukraine. He's arming Iran even though they threatened to wipe Israel off the map. Now, Putin is threatening to go nuclear in Ukraine. Biden isn't taking it seriously enough, but Putin is dead serious. As I wrote in Enemies and Allies, Putin sees himself as both czar and godfather. And as I warned in March on All Israel News, not since the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962 has the world been this close to nuclear war. Back in March, it was clear that Putin was already losing in Ukraine. And six months later, he's been humiliated there. Desperate, he's mobilizing 300,000 reservists. But if he cannot win conventionally, Putin just may resort to the nuclear option. That's why he's so dangerous. He doesn't simply have a deadly military machine. He's willing to use it. And make no mistake, Ukraine isn't the end of Putin's murderous ambitions. And one question I've been re asked repeatedly by Christians over the years is this. Is Vladimir Putin Gog? Is he the evil dictator prophesied in Ezekiel 38 and 39, who forms an alliance with Iran, Turkey, and other countries in the last days to invade Israel? Interest in these biblical prophecies has surged this year. One reason is this photo. That's Putin on the left. Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi in the middle. Turkish President Recep Erdogan on the right. They met in July in Tehran, vowing to continue their military operations in Syria, just north of Israel. Another reason, this photo. Though severely ill, Iran's supreme leader has made time for his most important ally, who's helping to build Tehran's nuclear program and selling them advanced weapons. Another reason, this photo. Last month, Putin again met with Iran's president, why? Quote, Russia and Iran are finalizing a new major treaty that will elevate bilateral relations to the level of a strategic partnership, Putin said. Now, does this mean that the war of Gog and Magog is imminent? No. Yet never in the 2,600 years since Ezekiel prophesied have we seen Russia and Iran forming such an alliance. Does this really mean that Putin is Gog? Look, it's too early to draw conclusions, but it is fair to say that Putin is Gog-esque. Maybe he doesn't make it to his 71st birthday. Maybe he's defeated in Ukraine and overthrown in Moscow. But if Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin turns the tables and wins in Ukraine, fear over who he'll target next will certainly mount certainly here in Jerusalem.